You had a chance. Oh, my oh, bad. Oh, I'm sorry. No, you can write it back. I like it. I like it. I'm glad you liked it. I loved it. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. I like it. <laughs> Hey guys, Brian here, and man, that was a brutal, savage checkmate, man. And I, I think it highlights one of the um, important kind of psychological trends in chess. It's like you know, you, you get overconfident when you're up material. So you kind of become blind to your opponent's threats, and on the flip side, when you're the one down material, it's kind of the pressure of winning is off, so you're able to kind of think more clearly and creatively. So it kind of, you know, evens out. And you see scenarios like this where the person who's up big loses at the end like this, and 
it's, it's I think it's kind of cool. It highlights one of those psychological kind of trends in chess. And um, but I think Anthony uh, showed him some respect even at the end, even though he didn't shake his hand. You know, he he said <laughs> he liked it. He thought it was good. It was good. And some tension between the two, but uh, I think uh, mutual respect there. So that's always good to know. And um, yeah, those pieces are really interesting. I don't think I've ever seen anybody play with those type of pieces before. Um, they're the only ones who've been using it. And if you guys are curious what they are, they're called Nero High Polymer Extra Heavy Weighted Chess Pieces. And the, I think they're the tallest ones you can buy. The king is 4.25 inches. That's really high. And, oh, sorry. Um... The, the weight of the set is like 4.58 pounds, and it seems to get really good reviews on Amazon. So if you guys are interested in splurging for that, the link is in the video description. And um, so check it out. All right, so let's go over the game and see what we can learn. So, and uh, let me know what you guys thought of the game in the comments below too. So in this position, black plays um, bishop f6, and in the game we have castle, but let's go move back. Pause the video. What would have been another move for white here? It's a sneaky tactic. All right, starts off with knight takes e4, and just to show you guys what happens if d takes, then can you see it? Check and pick up the rook. So going back here, um, obviously you can't take, so bishop b7, and then you can go ahead and scoop up that um, bishop and castle. So it's a sneaky way to kind of get a pawn and a bishop um, if if black does not play the correct move. So that's one tactic we can learn from. All right, let's go here in this position in the game. Black played rook a c8, and then white took with the knight. But let's go move back. Pause the video. What would have been another? move for white here what would have been a more let me yeah, phrase it more forceful move okay instead of knight takes simply take with the rook and rook takes check and pick up the rook with the knight but now you're thinking what the heck but this seems to be a inferior version of the tactic because in the in the actual game white was up not not a knight but a rook and yes that did happen because all right let's go to that position before that happens in the game we had the check and we had black play king over but let's go move back pause video what would have been another move for for black here all right so instead of losing this rook he just interposes and white will add some pressure but black can defend and white is still winning here, and what white's going to do on the next move is chop off this pawn. Black will want to get out of this pin, and now white can start rolling these um, pawns, so black has to worry about that. So, um, computer has white winning here at 2.1. And last but not least, let's go to the end and here. Um, in the game, black played d2, and then white played rook e8. And if you guys are curious what the numbers are in this position, white is at nine point, around 9.3. So crazy, crazy uh, vic uh, margin of victory here. But it went from 9.3 to, sorry, I'm burping. I don't know why. <laughs> 9.3 to mate in two. So let's go move back, pause the video. What would have been the best move for white here? All right, it is simply queen d4. And it just goes to show you that, um, I mean, yeah, just keep an eye on this pawn. It just goes to show you when, when you're up material, when you feel like you're winning, that's when you should be most careful. Like, that's when you have to be extra cautious because you're going to get that feeling like, oh, it's going to be easy. I'm just going to coast through it. And stuff like this happens. It happens to everybody. So um, I've definitely experienced it too. So... Um, isn't there like a Napoleon quote, like the most dangerous moment is after victory or something like that? I don't know, but, uh, just a cool game to highlight that important psychological kind of trend. So everyone keeps it in mind and it was a sweet mate by, um, by Drew. So well done, Drew and good game to both. 
mutual uh, grudging <laughs> respect, I think, from both. So, all right. Hope you guys enjoyed the game. Hope you guys enjoyed the analysis. Please don't forget to like, share, comment, and subscribe. Hit that bell notification. And thanks. I'll see you guys later. Thank you.